Now at six, an election year tug of war over how Multnomah County spends the city of Portland's money to address homelessness. We are highly motivated on this subject because the public's highly motivated on this subject. Plus, in this last uh, four years after COVID, it really bumped up. Rising rents pushing minority owned businesses out of city owned property. And pool season off with a splash. He woke up this morning and was like, we gotta go get my goggles, get my towel. Here we are. The big opening day for pools around Portland and some safety reminders as things heat up. Big talks today about how money meant to help the homeless crisis in Portland is actually spent. Thank you for joining us here at six. I'm Christine Pitawanich. The city pays Multnomah County millions of dollars each and every year to address homelessness. But now city leaders are debating whether to keep sending money. Blair Best is live in the newsroom for us this evening and Blair. There was a long discussion at city council today. Discussion was scheduled to last 45 minutes, but it went on for four hours and that's because homelessness is a topic affecting so many and as the mayor mentioned today it is the most important issue in our community now the city has a big decision to make with how they continue to spend millions of dollars meant to help the crisis the city is deciding whether or not to continue funding the joint office of homeless services that's the city and county run group that manages money meant for the crisis but the county holds most of the power the city's contract with the group expires in 10 days and some city commissioners are skeptical of resigning the contract on the table calls for the city to send the county about $30 million a year for the next three years. The problem? Some city commissioners aren't clear on how that money will be spent. In recent weeks, they've raised concerns over the county spending on tent and tarp distribution for homeless people, while at the same time, the city spends millions removing, arguably, those same tents and tarps. About two hours into the meeting, things heated up as Mayor Ted Wheeler revealed his motive behind wanting to continue sending city money to the county. I'd like to make the case, please. Um, and I'm going to be uh, very bottom line oriented, very pragmatic and probably completely inappropriate. Uh, but the way I view it is by making this investment, we get to shape policy and priorities at the joint office and we get access to steering 10 times the amount of funding that we are putting in, especially under the new IGA. So I actually view it as a good investment provided that we hold the joint office accountable and continue to be able to shape their work in a manner that's consistent with our goals here at the city of Portland. Now, ultimately today, city commissioners voted to move this to a second reading with a final vote coming next week. Christine. Yeah, important reporting here. Thank you so much, Blair. Now to some of your other local headlines. A Washington County Sheriff's deputy died while riding his scooter home from work. The Sheriff's Office says yesterday afternoon, Deputy Richard Thompson was involved in a crash with a vehicle at Southwest 201st Avenue and Baseline Road. Despite efforts from the community, from deputies, and from medical personnel arriving on scene, uh, the deputy did not survive his injuries. Deputy Thompson joined the Washington County Sheriff's Office back in 2001 and was a certified corrections deputy. He leaves behind his wife and two kids. The crash is under investigation. A TriMet officer is recovering after being assaulted at the Providence Park Max stop in Southwest Portland's Goose Hollow neighborhood. It happened around 930 this morning on the eastbound platform. TriMet says the assault happened after the officer approached a person who was smoking, which is not allowed on TriMet property. We don't know the extent of the injuries, but a KGW videographer at the scene says the officer's leg appeared to be hurt. The suspect took off and has not been found, and at this point, we do not have a description. And you remember this, right? When 28 people got stuck upside down for nearly a half hour at the top of the atmosphere ride at the Oaks Amusement Park. No one was seriously hurt, but now six days later, and we're hearing about legal action. Willamette Week reporting a 14-year-old girl's parent filed a lawsuit today, accusing the park of negligence in maintaining the ride. They want $125,000 in damages. The ride's manufacturer is leading the investigation into what went wrong. It'll have to pass a state inspection before reopening. 
And the family of a Franklin High School student who lost part of a finger in a wood shop accident is now suing Portland Public Schools for nearly $5 million. The injury happened two years ago when the student was using a machine to sculpt a small piece of wood. The lawsuit alleges the teacher did not adequately train the student to use the machine and it was not equipped with safety devices. The family also says the school's nurse sent the student to urgent care rather than a hospital emergency room. Portland Public Schools is not commenting on the suit. Daisy. Thanks so much, Christine. And yeah, happy first day officially of summer. I cannot believe that we're here, but we are And Mother Nature did not disappoint bringing us some sunshine to parts of the coastline like Cannon Beach, 66 degrees out there and also the reserve golf course near 90 degrees. And hey, we officially hit 90 degrees here in the Rose City, making it the third official day that we have hit 90 so far this year. And the rest of your current temperatures, it's a warm one for sure. 89 nine degrees in Forest Grove, also for Hillsboro, 91 degrees for Troutdale, but our warmest spot is check this out. The Dalles right at 92 degrees. Tomorrow's looking a little like this 65 degrees as we're waking up right about 8 o'clock, 80 degrees by noon with more of that sunshine continuing on into the evening, 88 degrees by 5 o'clock with that sunset. Beautiful sunset at 9.03. But hey, we have a lot more to talk about and I'll give you those details coming up. Can't wait to hear them. Thank you so much, Daisy. Two small businesses in Northeast Portland are worried about rising rents. Both businesses date back to the 90s when the city pushed to support minority owned businesses in that area. Sydney Dorner spoke with the owners in Sydney. Now they say they're feeling like they're getting pushed out. That's right, Christine. Walnut Park has a rich history for the black community here in Portland, known for the popular group of stores off MLK and Northeast Killingsworth. But the building is shared with the Portland Police Bureau. The two owners I spoke with say over the decades, small businesses have moved out while PPB has expanded, losing the true essence of why the center was built in the first place. When your rent jumps, you know, uh, almost $1,000, uh, that's a shock to your system, and I think that with any business. 29 years ago, the city of Portland started the Walnut Park and North Precinct retail project, hoping to turn an old Fred Meyer on MLK and Northeast Killingsworth into a commercial center, sharing the building with Portland police. This gave a shot to smaller-owned minority businesses just starting out. Jerome Polk, the owner of JP's Custom Framing and Gallery, was one of them. His rent went up this year from 1200 a month to 1800 a month. Originally, 14 out of the 18 shops were owned by people of color. He says most of the other original owners left due to rising rents. All of those businesses that has gone, now the police has those has occupied those spots, those spots. Defeating the goal of the initiative. The city, to be honest with them, as far as what is the ultimate plan, if, the, if it is, I need to be on the lookout for trying to secure myself and a place for my business to continue. Jay Wan Wu owns Walnut Park Cleaners and Coin Laundry. He's been running businesses in Northeast Portland since the 80s. Recently, his rent jumped from $2,900 a month to $3,500 a month. Price is uh, getting uh, out of control, uh, rent price probably especially, and uh, therefore it's hard to have a business around here, so they're moving out way, way out somewhere where they can handle it. He hopes the city can see the importance of their businesses and say many of the shops carry items you can't get anywhere else in Portland. We need we need to have our businesses. This is our thrive uh, our community. So we need uh, black people to have our, our business here. Now, we did reach out to the city of Portland. They say they have worked diligently to accommodate a variety of individual tenant needs over time, confirming there is no current plan for PPB to expand in the Walnut Park building. Christine, back to you. Okay, thank you for that report, Sydney. 
It is a big job to remove graffiti seven stories up, but that's exactly what's happening at a historic building in downtown Portland. The graffiti is on two sides of the top part of the Pythian building on Southwest Yam Hill by Director Park. The big letters are about 10 feet tall and are not spray painted on. Taggers used paint rollers and two layers of paint, making it harder to get off. The graffiti removal company says it'll take them a couple days to make the old brick clean again. It's an historic building, so we don't want to sandblast it. We don't want to soda blast it. We don't even want to paint it. We want to remove it and restore the building back to its original condition. The company developed a portable pressure spraying system to get to hard to reach places and hires workers trained to do this kind of off the ground work. This was a private job for the building, but the city can in some cases foot the bill for graffiti removal. We've got more information at KGW.com. It's a good supportive community. Um, we all look out for each other. And I was incredibly disappointed to have to tell my neighbor that both of us had our roses stolen today. A rude awakening in southwest Portland's Goose Hollow neighborhood. Home surveillance video you see there shows people taking roses and other flowers from several homes earlier this morning. The one homeowner we spoke with says he's dealt with flower thieves in the past, but this time was a bit different. They had um, one person in the car while the other person was walking alongside the car. And they're basically shopping for roses and lighting up what they assume is their store for free. Gosh, what a way to describe the situation. He says he thinks the same group hit his home and several others at least twice overnight. Coming up, the first day of summer, and it's already been a busy year for lifeguards at High Rocks. What you need to know before you take the plunge. And how you can welcome a new furry friend into your family for free. We've got the details. And also up next on the story, we've heard people's stories. Now we've got the data. We found out Oregon ranks close to the bottom in the U.S. for getting your unemployment benefits out to you on time. That's ahead at 630 on the story only here on KGW.